welcome to another episode. Um, let me just move my soldering iron out of the way there. Today, we've got something special, ignore the banging. Uh, oh, you really can't see that in this camera, can you? Well, you could probably guess what this is. Let me just uh, move the camera. Let me just take it out of its little holder here. There we go. And we have here a Commodore 64. How awesome is that? This is a classic 8-bit computer. Uh, for those of you that know me, you know that I'm actually going to be building an 8-bit computer, but nowhere near as good as the C64. It's basically going to be a glorified calculator. So this is not actually mine. This belongs to a friend um, who's actually given it over to me to fix. Okay, so you can see here we've got the control ports on the side, good old power switch that's clunky as hell. Uh, power input. Uh, got a couple of ports over here. I can't remember which one is which now, but the one on the left there is definitely a, the AV port, I'm sure of it. Uh, look at that, an old coaxial cable and a tuning mechanism so you could tune it into your TV properly. And a cartridge slot, so you can play a cartridge game. You can probably get a little look inside, but we are going to tear this open at some point. Uh, and yeah, you can see inside there, look at those, they're through-hole components. That's how you should build a computer. Look at all those. You can't really see all the chips in there, but you can see some of them. Look at that, something's come off the board there. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're going to be doing a small series on repairing the Commodore 64. Um, so that's going to be uh, a focus of some uh, um, videos coming up. Uh, sometimes the Commodore 64 has an issue where the power supply outputs far too much voltage and fries the hole inside, um, which is one of the reasons why this could end, end up being black screen. Um, so this actually does nothing. There's, there's, it's, a, it's a black screen when you try to power it on. I'm not sure. I haven't even tried myself. I'm not even sure if the power light comes on, but that's all I've been told. So in this first video, we're going to check the power supply. Yeah, let's get started. Okay, this is the power supply for the Commodore 64. It's a brick. Uh, it really is. It's a heavy, clunky thing. I bet you if we open this up inside, there's all sorts of lovely transformers and everything there. Um, you have to cock your head on the side here, I'm afraid, because I'm not recording this in portrait. So input then, we've got 240 volts AC, um, and output is 5 volt DC and 9 volt AC. Hmm, okay. So this actually outputs two different uh, voltages. Now, the, the brick here, from what I can see, is actually a sealed unit. So I'm not going to be able to open this up and have a look inside. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to try and find that. Whoa, that looks a bit dodgy, doesn't it? I'm going to have to try and find what these pinouts are. Um, this is a very strange looking DIN plug, isn't it? Hmm. Yes, it is. So we're going to have to figure out what these pinouts are. So I'm going to just grab my laptop and I'm going to flash them up on screen. Um, I'm not going to record it now, but I'm going to flash up on screen what those pinouts are right now. Now, okay, so on this diagram here, we've got seven pins for the power plug. Um, this is as you're looking at the socket, okay? Um, so you can see pin one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, and three are ground. Four is not connected. Five is DC five volts. And pin six and seven is nine volt AC. So if we have a look at the actual connector that we've got here, turn this around. Um, now what you've got to remember is you, this is actually going to be the mirror. Um, of what we're looking at. So it's as you plug it into the socket, uh, so these ones at the top are going to be 6 and 7. Uh, so you've got the schematic saying 6 and 7, so that one's 6, that one is 7. In fact, let me just grab a, something else that I can point with when I use a scalpel. Hopefully I don't stab myself because I've got no depth perception behind the camera. <laughs> it's going to be funny. Uh, so this one down here is pin number 2, and this one here is pin number 5. So these two are our 9 volt AC, and these two here, no sorry, these two here are our 9 volt AC. Uh, this one is ground, and this one here is our 5 volts. So what we're going to do is we're going to check that with a multimeter. Um, let me just close my soldering iron case here and bring the multimeter over. And so, let's just push everything out of the way here and bring my multimeter test leads into an area where I can actually use them. Uh, so we're going to go DC first, and we're going to be looking at... Oh, that's nice. I've got the light on there. I've set it to, what is it, 20 volts DC. So we can measure the 5 volts. Um, so we're looking at, what, pin 3 being the ground pin. 
This is a bit awkward. Uh, let's just get them into the chopstick position, shall we? And looking at pin five being the five volts. So I want to have them that way round. And we've got to try and get them to chopstick. Will it chopstick? That's the question. Okay, here we go. I think I can do this. Let's just do that. What have we got? Okay, we've got 5.3 volts, so that's looking good. I hope you could see that. Now let's move over to AC, and let's see if we can get this 9 volt AC registering. So this is going to be an interesting thing. <laughs> right, let's just go here. 9.4, 9.5, 9.6, 9.7, 9.8. Incredibly awkward trying to get these pins. This is why I should really try and get a socket going. This is really awkward actually, because I'm trying not to hit the shield. Okay, yep, 9.4 volts there, so that's good. So we do have five volts. We have the correct and the nine volts AC coming from the power supply. So the power supply is fine. So we're good on that. Um, I'm gonna plug this into the C64 now and we're gonna see if that light comes on. Um, this is something I haven't actually done or tested, so it's powered off. Let's just plug it into there. Okay, I'm going to turn it around like this so you can see. That's the power light. Let's turn it on. Okay, so the system is getting power. Right. So we need to now see whether it might have been the cable that's faulty, in which case that's something else entirely, um, or if there is something wrong inside the Commodore 64. Let's take the Commodore 64 and open it up. Um, so we know that the power goes in, uh, it lights up the LED here, uh, but nothing else as far as we know works. Um, so let's have a look at the bottom. Just move some stuff out of the way here. Right, so we've got three screws here, so we're going to take those out first and see how we go with that. Where's my screwdriver gone? Right, so one thing I do like about old technology is it's really simple to open. It's just a simple Phillips screw. None of this uh, Torx or security stuff that you normally get with the modern consoles or anything like that. Um, it was quite fun actually. I used to modify PlayStations back in the day. Those were the days the PS1, the PS2, mod chips, woohoo! Nowadays you can't do it because they have regular firmware updates, which is quite annoying. And I'm not into hacking firmware. So there we go. Right, let's have a look here then, shall we? Let's uh, flick this up and see if we can uh, lift the case off. I think it's just those three screws, isn't it? Yeah, and the whole thing just unclips from underneath. And there we are, look at that. So we've got the keyboard connector here, so we can unplug the keyboard. And we've got the... Ah, looks like this has already gone through some repairs here. Because these are socketed. Normally, they wouldn't be socketed. Right, let's just try and take this connector off the board here. Just remembering. Okay. So there we go. That's the uh, the top half of the Commodore 64, the keyboard coming off. Um, I'm guessing that cable there is just for the power. So we know power is coming to here to turn off that, or to turn on that light. So looking at it, it does look a bit, uh, hmm, yeah, there's a bit of, dirt on there it's a bit rusty so I don't know if that's what's that gonna what's it gonna look like underneath but it doesn't really matter because this isn't putting out or this should be putting out a video signal but it's uh, I think it's this one isn't it let's have a look yeah it's that one is it oh 906114 hmm, pull that there right so it does look like it's undergone repairs before so we've got uh, this uh, these two chips have been socketed, and this one is socketed as well. Um, so yeah, I am guessing, oh, there's a few more here that have also been socketed as well. So I'm guessing that these have actually um, been pulled at some point um, to be replaced. Uh, this one here, oh, this looks a little bit dodgy. Looks like that's come away. Um, 
But yeah, we've got to try and figure out what is wrong. First thing to do is check the fuse. So I'm guessing this is the AC fuse. Let's try and uh, have a look at that. Well, it looks okay. It doesn't look like that's popped. Let's grab that. Yep, that's fine. Okay, you know, the power switch works. The power comes in. What we've got to figure out now is where is it all going wrong? Okay, now I have a schematic on my laptop here, so I'm just going to take a look at this. And it's got, well, this is actually the service manual that I have here. Um, so we're going to take a look. It does have a troubleshooting section of the service manual. So symptom, black screen on power up. So external power supply, we know that that's okay. Um, and then we've got a load of ROMs to check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the schematic here and just see, because um, we know the power is coming on and it's coming, at least coming to this connector here to light up the LED. Now I can't see, well I can see actually, this does not look particularly nice. It looks like this capacitor has leaked. Yeah, that, that capacitor there doesn't look too healthy from the look of it. I don't know if you can see that, but here it looks like there's some of the electrolytic fluid has come through there. So it could be that that capacitor has gone. So it could be that that's causing the problem. Um, one way we can find it is to see if there's any power getting to any of the chips. Um, so yeah, let me just pull up the schematic and then we'll have a look and go through uh, some of these items and see what we have. Um, maybe if I can find a test point or something that might give us some idea as to where I should go. So looking at this, the kernel ROM, uh, which is U4. So the kernel ROM is here. So we're going to check with the kernel ROM and see if it's actually getting any voltage. So I'm going to see, it should be getting um, VCC 5 volts. So let me just put my multimeter on. Um, I'm going to just shift this over a little bit to here. So you can see my multimeter here. Let me just put the backlight on. There we go. And I'm going to plug this in. Okay, now we've got to be careful. Because now we're going to have live voltages running around and we don't want to accidentally touch something to blow ourselves up and to destroy here. Right, so looking at the schematic, pin number 24 on the kernel ROM should be, uh, just let me find a ground point here. So if I could just do this, couldn't I? Whoops. Okay. So pin number 24, so this will be pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So pin 24 should be this top one here. Let's see if that's getting any voltage. Okay, yeah, you can see that's getting 5 volts over there, which is good. Okay, just let that run for a second and see if any of these chips are actually going to get warm or hot. Okay, so maybe that capacitor isn't dead. It's just something on there. Maybe the, the SID chip. Let's have a check on the SID chip. Which one is uh, VCC? Pin number 25. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's 28, 27, 26, 27, uh, 28, 27, 26, 25. Okay, yeah, that's getting 5 volts as well. So we are getting power to the board. We're just not getting anything out. Okay, I left it running for a little while. The SID chip is getting really hot, actually. It's getting quite warm. And the CPU is as well. It might be that the CPU or the SID chip have, uh, have gone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the SID out. Um and plug it into a TV and then see if that does anything. I'm going to pull these some of these chips out. They've already been re replaced um, and see how it goes. 
Um, and then we're going to start troubleshooting it. Um, so yeah, this is going to be an ongoing project. Um, so, thank you for joining me for this short video. Uh, we checked the power supply. The power supply seems to be fine. The board is getting power. The chips are getting the correct voltages. They're getting 5 volts. Um, so, the power rails on the board are fine. So, it's definitely something to do with the chips. Um, so, we're just going to have to have a look at the chips one by one and see if any of them are faulty or um, balked, I suppose is the correct terminology to use. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be fun to do. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button. Um, don't forget to subscribe um, and hit the little alarm icon if you do. That will uh, notify you when you get a new video. Um, if you want to be really ultra cool, you can drop us a tip on PayPal Me or check out our Patreon. And yeah, thank you very much for dropping by and watching this video. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to fix this Commodore 64 and bring it back to life and play some classic games. That would be fantastic. So thank you very much for watching, and until the next time, until the next video, catch you later. Bye-bye. Should we be bye-bye? Bye-bye. I don't know. Yeah, that's getting quite warm. Oh, I want this to work.